those of you that don't know, I just finished my first block of medical school. Let me explain what that means. That means that I spent one month relearning basically four different very intense classes that I took in undergrad. Biochemistry, genetics, biostatistics, pharmacology, which I didn't even take in undergrad, but hey, why not throw that in? It was quite a wild ride and I'm here to share it with you and to tell you a little bit about what I went through and also just what my life is like as a medical student. Let's take it back to my first day of medical school. I was really nervous. Who wouldn't be, obviously. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm not the best with new chapters, new responsibilities, new beginnings in general. I think a lot of change is something that I am not great at because I am always nervous about what my life is gonna look like. And I like being comfortable. I like knowing where I'm gonna be every day. I like having a set routine and just having my little spots that are like my safe spaces and everything was new. I was excited, but nervous. I had been dreaming about going to medical school on and off since I was young. And I had a lot of expectations and some of them were good and some of them were bad. And I was hoping that all the good ones were true and all the bad ones weren't. <laughs> I wanted things to live up to the good expectations that I had for them. I think also just after being pre-med, like pre-med at an undergrad for so long, you really get stuck in that identity of always having that end goal of going to medical school. And you start to realize that there's some days that are harder than others as like a pre-med student. So you think to yourself that maybe you'll never get into medical school or maybe you'll have to apply twice or three times or more than that to get into medical school. There's just so many hoops that you have to jump through as a pre-med student. And also just the nature of the title, pre-med, like you're pre something. You're, it feels like your identity isn't complete yet because you are not at that stage in your career and your training where you can say you are in the medical field, you're just someone that wants to be. So I was finally in the med stage of my pre-med career and like I, I was just shocked that I had made it this far and I started to think back to my days being pre-med and where I really doubted myself and had insecurity about my application and didn't know if I was gonna make it or if I was gonna get in. So I think that first day just meant a lot to me because of that. I was thinking a lot about my past self and everything that I had to go through to get to that point. Also, I was going through a lot of personal issues at the time that school started. I lost one of my family members two weeks before school started and then also went through breakup, but I luckily have great therapist and I'm on medication and it's just really helped me deal with a lot of things that are going on and just know more about myself in terms of therapy, just know more about myself and why I'm feeling certain ways. And if you are feeling in any way like you're not 100% yourself, I would highly recommend going to talk to a therapist if you have access to one. Because of COVID and the lockdown, I got a lot of social anxiety once things started opening up again. I, I kind of just forgot how to talk to people. So I was nervous about starting medical school because I still have a lot of that social anxiety that I'm dealing with. And meeting 180 new people all at the same time, and then also starting to study like eight hours a day. I'm like, where do we find the time to sit down and talk to these people and get to know people? So that was something that I was really concerned about. And just loneliness in general. I honestly like being alone. I kind of thrive when I'm alone and I really appreciate time by myself because I can just do whatever I want and have a good time and just, I don't know, I, the, the day just passes and I don't know what happens, but it's like a good day for me. <laughs> I was really nervous about being really lonely, but then also being like, okay alone, but then also feeling like, okay, if these people make friends and I'm not friends with them, then 
am I gonna make friends? Like, I should probably have friends. <laughs> like, all of these thoughts that were just going through my head. And I will say, like, at the beginning, it was hard because every day you would meet someone new and it's like, okay, where are you from? Where did you go to undergrad? What did you major in? Okay, here's where I'm from, what I went to under, like, it's just like very surface level. And you meet like so many people that you feel like you don't remember who's who or where people are from or what, what they're passionate about, what they're into. Like you don't really get to know people, but that has been greatly improving with time. And I think a lot of my classmates would agree that like we have gotten so close throughout the past month because of just the, the mutual suffering that we're going through with classes and medical school in general. So that has been getting better. And I just wanted to share my side of it because I feel like it was something that I wasn't exactly expecting. Like I, I knew that it was gonna be a hard transition, but I just wanted to share because I feel like if I heard someone talk about that transition, it would have helped me when I was going through it. But yeah, maybe this is just me oversharing on the internet. I don't know. <laughs> I knew I was going to be spending a lot of time studying in my room. So I knew I wanted to make it comfortable and make it a place that I was going to be excited about and, and want to study in. So I spent a lot of time decorating and maybe a li some would say I spent a little too much time decorating and a little more time could have been spent on studying but that is besides the point <laughs> so I I was really inspired by Damon Dominique who is a youtuber and he had this gallery wall in his French apartment when he was living there and I loved it. I thought it just spoke to me and I decided I wanted to do something similar and something I could add to throughout the years if I was gonna stay in this place for a long period of time. And I also got a standing desk. I had this vision for my room where I had a standing desk and I had an under desk treadmill because I hate sitting for very long and I get really antsy and I can't focus. So I was really into this vision, but it was a very expensive vision. So I was like, okay, how can I make this work? And I was looking at standing desks on Amazon and I put one in my cart, but I wasn't ready to pull the trigger on it. I was very apprehensive. And then when I got to school, my I literally walked into my apartment and the standing desk that I had in my cart was right in front of me in the living room. And I was like, whose desk is this? And my roommate said that her old roommate was getting rid of it. And I I jumped on that. I said, is he, is he willing to sell it to me? Because I will sell it. And I got it for a discount. And then the treadmill comes in because I just really wanted a treadmill. And so I reached out to EgoFit and said, hey, I will promote this on my page literally for infinity because I love it so much if you just give me a treadmill and they said sure so <laughs> they sent me a treadmill and it was one of the best days of my life I was so excited I remember I was sitting in class I got the notification that the package was available in the mail room and I could I immediately I was like kind of sleepy that day immediately was wide awake and I was just like ready to get out of that lecture hall so I could get home and unpack it and I got it all set up and I have been using it pretty much every single day and it makes me feel so good like the endorphins I get from just exercising also the fact that I can just do like a thousand flashcards in a day and not even really feel antsy or like I have a lot of extra energy at the end of it is so nice I sleep so much better too because I'm getting so much exercise and overall it has just it drastically improved my studying capabilities and I'm just ugh, I'm so in love with my desk setup and if you think you're gonna be studying for a long period of time it I it's or working it's just so worth it like it's an investment in your own health I am very happy with the way my room turned out I honestly at this point I think I made it too comfortable to the point where I never want to leave and I'm like okay Claire we need to be social today like we need to see people and not just stay in our room all day and watch Gilmore Girls in between study session. You need to go out and be in the world. And that is the perfect study setup for me. That is the perfect room setup for me because I really wanted to be comfortable in my room after going through all of this stuff, this new, new beginnings, new chapters and all of that. I was like, the room is the one thing I will not compromise on. 
I just have loved um, the classes that my school has been able to provide us. I think the curriculum in general is just, it's a lot, like I mentioned, but it is interesting. Can I, can I say that? It's, it's interesting. <laughs> like I, there are so many relearning moments I've had where I'm like, I definitely remember learning this in undergrad, but I haven't remembered it since. I haven't really even thought, like the Krebs cycle, the classic one that everyone complains about learning, right? Like, oh, I have to learn the Krebs cycle. Like, oh, I have to learn gluconeogenesis. I'm never gonna use this, blah, blah, blah. You use it. Let me tell you, let me, let me tell you, you relearn it. And then you also learn in medical school where things go wrong. We're learning this to learn where things go wrong in it because that is where disease and pathology come from. The Krebs cycle not working, that is a disease. Gluconeogenesis not working, that also is a disease. It's like six different diseases. Everything is a disease. Maybe in the future you won't remember every single molecular pathway. That's that's bound to happen. But I think for me, it gives so much more clarity. It makes you more aware of your own body. And that is something that is truly a privilege. Medical school in general is just such a privilege. Not everyone knows what is going on in their body. And that is something that is mind blowing. Like it really does change your perspective. So I've been liking the curriculum, which is great. It's great, I like it. I, I, um, I have a professor who's really obsessed with Harry Potter and I am like, thank you. Like more people need to be talking about Harry Potter on a daily basis. Like who, who why aren't people talking about that all the time? Medical school is basically just Hogwarts. If you really think about it, you meet a bunch of new people and they're all in the same boat and you're all studying. And basically it's a bunch of Hermione's together. Yeah. And also you're just like learning a lot of Latin words. That sounds like magic spells to me. I don't know. I don't know. You can, you can say I'm wrong. I just, all I'm saying is Harry Potter, I think was just based off of a medical school class. That's all, that is all. But <laughs> yeah, I really like the professor. Unfortunately, we have different professors every block. So I'll have to keep you updated on professors in the future and how classes are going in the future but so far I'm really enjoying it and in general I think it's just been such a great experience. Anatomy Lab was one of the things that I was really hesitant about because I was not sure how I was going to react to seeing a donor and a donor is a person that has passed on and has donated their body for science and we essentially dissect a person's body and that's a pretty intense endeavor it, it's not something that anyone can do it's it's obviously like very specific to medical school and and, and health professional schools so um it is a privilege it's interesting i i talked to a friend from my high school um, the week that we were doing um, anatomy and I said, yeah, I have anatomy on Monday. I'm a little nervous about it because I am not sure how I'm going to react. I really don't want to faint. And, and she was like, oh, okay, like what animal are you dissecting? And I was like, no, actually we are working on a human body. And she was shocked. Like, I think a lot of people don't realize that that's something medical students do. And I agree, it's it's shocking to think about. And I also, um, I had just gone through a really rough time as well, having a family member pass on um, basically two weeks before I had anatomy. And there were times during it that it was really overwhelming for me to be around so many donors and to have to have those feelings be brought up literally every single time I walk into the door and see basically body bags. So that was not easy. We had a post anatomy discussion with the medical humanities group. It was really nice to be able to talk about but how hard it is to go through something like that and just assume it's normal for everyone. I think it was just, it was, it's really jarring. And it was nice to have a group of people to talk about that with. 
and this my school really provided that for us which was nice and in general that just provided a lot of solace for me but yeah I think in general it's been it's been a very up and down <laughs> experience for me as you can see I have been through it, it feels like ages when it's really only been weeks which is crazy and I'm really excited to see where the rest of this takes me I I know that this career is not something that is the easiest thing to do and I know that it's also an insane privilege to be a physician and I know that one day that is going to be who I am and I think that right now I it's just crazy to think about how far that I've come in this process and I can't even really imagine what the future is going to look like. I, I don't know what specialty I want to do. I basically find a new one that I want to do every week and then I tell everyone I know about it. I'm like, have you heard how great neurology is? Have you heard how great psychiatry is? It's just like, it's constant. <laughs> it's constant. They're like, we don't want to hear it anymore unless you're sure. <laughs> but um, it's it's just like a whole process. And I think in general, I'm... I'm really excited to see where it takes me. And I'm excited that you guys are potentially watching and hoping that you like it too. I don't know. This is mostly for my own records, I guess. Like I really like making content. I think it's a really fun, creative way to just express myself and remember my life. I want to make sure that I remember the good and the bad that I go through so I can appreciate the present more and appreciate what I have and be grateful for what I have because I can see how far I've come. So thank you for watching. I know this was a whole experience, but I really appreciate any support that you are providing me. So thank you. Okay, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos. And um, I have a TikTok, I have an Instagram, it'll all be linked. Uh, let me know what other kind of content you're looking to see. Nope, that didn't make sense. Let me know what kind of content you want to see from me. There we go. Okay, <laughs> have a good day. Bye.